What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Wild Willow. Sorry your girl's been MIA recently. I have been quite busy, but today I'm super excited to be on here because we are finally going to get into how to run a material test in Lightburn. That is my number one most asked question by other makers out there. How do you run a material test? And that's what I'm here to do today is teach you. So mainly this video is going to be for a lot of you out there that have no experience, but don't worry if you do have experience with running material tests, please stay tuned for today's video. You might learn something new because I'm going to be diving in pretty deep and teaching you guys some of these really cool settings to get you guys going on these material tests. Something that's really cool about these is whenever you run them, you're able to pull different shades out of your material. So sometimes if you have a tri-layer acrylic, you might be able to get four colors instead of three. Okay, so what is a material test? Because some of you out there might not actually know what it is. A material test is an array of small boxes and each little box has its own power and its own speed setting. Let's get into light burn. Let's open up a material test and get this thing going. Okay, so we got our light burn opened up. Let's go up to our laser tools uh, and then we're gonna come down to material test. So before we get into all this down here, let's just go over this top section. Uh, for starters, we have our presets. These down here are all the presets I've saved over the years. And then recently with upgrading with the laser burn, laser burn, <laughs> with upgrading to the Lightburn Pro 2.0, uh, they have these built-in presets. And these are great just to get the ball rolling. Um, most likely you will have to do some tweaking and adjusting but they're great to have uh, as a starting point whenever you start learning how to do your material tests on your own. So over here, we have our save button. And whenever you're done making your material test, you'll just hit the save button. And what I like to do, like I showed you over here, I like to put the laser that I'm using and the material that I am running the test on. And then I hit the save button. Uh, right here is just the option to delete. And then you can export and import uh, these files and so if you need to send them to people or something. Um, and then up here for title, for the title, I always like to put the laser that I'm using and the focus, whether it's defocused, focused, because you never know when you might defocus something. Um, you want to just be precise with these things so that if in a year from now, when you look back on it, you know the exact settings. So what I want to do now, I want to bring in my most popular uh, material test that I use. It's the tri-layer acrylic. It is for my 51 100 watt CO2 laser from Thunder Laser. So here are the settings that I have for that material test. Um, right here we have our Y, which is our vertical, and we have our X, which is our horizontal. So for our count, that is the number of boxes that we have uh, vertical. Same for over here, number of boxes that we have um, horizontal. You can change these to whatever you want. Um, right here for our vertical is our speed, and then for our horizontal is our power. So you don't have to run your material tests in only speed and power. You can drop these down and run tests with interval, passes, frequencies, and Primarily, these are used for Galvo lasers. Um, if you have certain tests that you do need to run, you can do it on your gantry, but we primarily use these for our Galvo lasers. Um, the minimum means that is the lowest speed that you are going to use. Uh, same over here, the lowest power, and the same for max, that is the highest power and the highest speed. Um, for our height, that is the uh, height of the boxes that we have on the material test. I have mine at five millimeters. Um, sometimes we do change that to three millimeters whenever we're working on our Galvo lasers so that we can do a lot more um, boxes but also not waste that much more space on the material. Okay, so now we have our Y center and our X center. So the reason why I can't click on these and change them is because over here, our start from is at user origin. So I will tell the laser where to go, where I want uh, the origin to be. And what I like to recommend and what I do is I do all my material tests in the corner of the material so I'm not wasting anything. Don't ever put it dead center. But if I was to exit out of this and change to absolute coordinates, so, so let's come back over here to our material test. Now I can adjust the Y center and the X center. And what this means is this measurement, 450 millimeters, uh, 
vertical and uh, our 650 millimeters horizontal, that's the dead center of the laser bed. So if you want to manually change the area that you want the material test to be cut out, you would need to come over here to the side where you see these numbers and you see these numbers. That's the measurements in millimeters. So if you needed to move it on the laser bed uh, manually, you would pick something like probably 720 to like maybe 200. And what that would be, our 720 would be our vertical and our 200 would be our horizontal. And that is the center of the material test. So you need to make sure you give yourself room around that center on your laser bed to run the material test. Um, this working in absolute coordinates would be something that I would do on my diode, um, but I would be over on user origin for my 100 watt CO2. All right, now let's get into our edit material settings. I just want to let you guys know that I'm not going to get super detailed with all of these settings because that is a whole nother video. I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet to the point to help you guys get started. Um, so starting up at the top, we have sub layer. So you can come over here to this plus sign and add another sub layer. And what you could use this for, um, if you wanted to do like an outline around all of your squares, if you do decide to do an outline on uh, the material test with adding this sub layer, it will put an outline on every single square in this setting here. Okay, now for speed and max power. So those two don't matter because our speed and power is set right here on, the, uh, on our material test that we made. Um, min power matters whenever you're cutting out material tests, whenever you're trying to figure out uh, good cut settings. So what the min power is, it's the power that it drops down to when it's cutting those corners. Um, I don't have air on because uh, for our engravings I don't run air. Uh, and then the default is just, if you click it, it's going to save it as the default every time you open up your material test. Um, down here, biodirectional fill, that's what this is. If you turn it off, it's just going to run engravings in one direction. Uh, I have it on so it runs back and forth to save me time. Uh, lines per inch, I have my lines per inch set to 317.5. And if I was to adjust that, it will automatically adjust the line intervals. Uh, and vice versa. Uh, number of passes, so I do a lot of my material tests with just one pass, but sometimes for this trilayer acrylic, um, I do two passes in order to get a clean engraving on that base layer. Okay, so in our text setting, um, all the settings in here actually do matter because they are different than the material test that you have already created. Um, so up here, the min power doesn't matter but max power and speed does. If you guys want to use my settings to get you started, if you have a similar laser, feel free to try them out. But if you don't and you're unsure, you can always just start with a lower power and you can always add more. Um, say after your material test is done engraving and you need to add more uh, engraving to your text, you can just simply start the material test again and then as soon as it's done engraving the text, you can stop the machine and you're done. Down here, all these things are the same as my previous uh, settings I just went over with you guys. Nothing changes. Um, this is all really simple. Okay, now we are going to get into our edit border setting. So what the border setting is, that is going to be the cut line that is around the material test. Um, so up here, I have 50 speed and max power 80 and my min power 20. That's what I use for all of my tri-layer acrylic, my dual layer acrylic, that is uh, 16, 1 16th of an inch thick. So if you are running your own material test and you get this going and you don't know what settings to use, always just start lower because you can always add more and I'll show you how you can add more. So we're gonna exit out of this. We're gonna go to preview. And right here we have a preview of our material test. So if we bring this back, once you get it in the general area that you want to go, you use your arrow keys and it will speed it up because sometimes you can't do it with your mouse. You have to use the arrow keys. So as soon as it starts the cut, let's bring it back here. Um, you would come over here to start here and then you would put start job on laser from here. So that way you don't have to waste all this hard work. You can just come and start it where you need it 
and get it cut out the right way. That's why it's so important to always start with lower power and you can always work your way up. Okay, we only have a few more things that we need to go over. Uh, let's open up our preview again. So I always recommend everybody open up your preview before you run your material test or any project for that matter. Make sure all your numbers look correct. Um, I don't care how experienced you are, it's so important to do this because you could be playing with some serious fire if you're not paying attention. Um, if you're new to running material tests, uh, it's very important that we pay attention to our lowest speed and our highest power. Whenever you first start it in the laser, pay attention to it and make sure that you're not going to catch fire or melt anything. Next we have our framing. So framing is super important also for any project or material test. Frame it before you start it, especially if you're messing around with your uh, Y center and your X center. Um, we have our start, pause, stop. You guys know what that is, send, easy. Uh, the save RD file, so I don't know actually anything about that. Um, I do know the one thing is that you can send uh, the file to your laser and it will be stored there. So if you guys know anything about that, put it in the comments. I'm always very eager to learn more about Lightburn. Um, and lastly, down here, we have our enable text. I'm not really sure why you'd want to turn that off, but the options there. Uh, and then we have our enable border. So you can turn that off whenever you're running your material tests on your tumblers and say your um, flasks, stuff like that. Okay, so for today's material test, I'm gonna be running it on the blue stainless red to white trilayer acrylic from Lone Star Adhesive. Uh, we do have to make some changes. We are going to have to do two passes. So let's change this to 20 power for our max power. And we are going to do two passes and we need to put our laser and it's focus. Okay, let's do a preview to make sure everything looks good. All right. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and send it over to the laser. All right, our material test is all done. It looks amazing. So because this is a two pass material test, I'm not going to be using one of the red settings off of this. I will look at one of my one pass material tests and go off of that. But for our white, I like a really deep engraving. So the settings that I usually use is 350 speed and 17 power. If you have a lot of detail in your hat patch or your designs, um, I recommend doing a little bit slower of a speed like 350 and if you don't have that much detail you definitely could pick up the speed a little bit and the same thing applies for the settings that I would use for my red engraving. All right everybody we did it that's a wrap our material test is cut out and is looking good. I really hope that you guys found today's video useful I really hope I was able to give you guys some good information if you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out. It's very important to me to help you guys out the best that I can. Um, if you guys are not yet subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm always trying to put out some good videos for you guys. Uh, and stay tuned very soon. Me and Joel are going to start doing lives. We're gonna bring other makers on. We're also gonna bring other business owners on. So that way we can give you guys an opportunity to kind of get to know us on a more personal level. Uh, but that's it. That's a wrap. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. Peace out.